to complete our discussions here of uh, the management of uh, type B dissections, uh, Dr. Deluzzo will come in and discuss open surgical management of symptomatic type B dissections when is surgery required. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation. It's hard to give a talk after such beautiful pictures and elaborate surgery, uh, but occasionally we have uh, the need for open surgery. Uh, <clears throat> I have no nothing to disclose. So the obviously this a lot of this will be redundant. Uh, we know the Eric dissection is re really a, a disease of disruption of the media. Uh, you can usually find an intimal tear in most patients where you have tracking of blood into the media, and then occasionally have uh, rupture into the, into the adventitia, and it can also go, uh, bleed back into the intima into the aortic lumen. The true instance of aortic dissection is unclear. Uh, there's a lot of patients who die before arriving to the hospital. And occasionally, and unfortunately we see frequently, uh, you do have missed uh, chances of making the diagnosis in the emergency room and these patients are sent home and unfortunately die. As mentioned before, the overall incidence of aortic dissection in the United States is uh, anywhere between two to th three cases per 100,000 pa 100, patients years, which is roughly anywhere between uh, 5,000 to 10,000 cases per year, uh, and that's also just an estimation. There are clear guidelines, again, for uh, the, the treatment of aortic dissection, specifically type B dissection by the American Heart Association. And these are, the, these are what we follow here uh, at our institution. Uh, again, these are all to try to decrease the wall stress uh, <clears throat> and uh, you know, usually with beta blockers, uh, decrease the uh, velocity of the uh, flow against the uh, aortic wall and the decreasing the uh, ventricular contraction and of course lowering the blood pressure. Uh, most of you are, I'm sure, uh, familiar with the uh, different recommendations by the different societies. The American uh, Heart Association is probably the most vigorous ones of all of the uh, societies. We have the European and also uh, that from Japan. Uh, from the European uh, guidelines, TVAR is still uh, the uh, treatment of choice for complicated type B dissection. And way down at the bottom in small writings, you see that there is a role potentially for surgery. Uh, and again, uh, most patients do well with the type B dissections, uh, those with uh, uncomplicated in the absence of malperfusion or signs of uh, progression early on can be treated medically, and only those who, who then progress with, to a complicated type B dissection, which is, of course, what is a complicated dissection is also uh, something that can be debated, uh, can, uh, will need uh, further therapy. And of course, the guidelines from Europe will uh, support the use of TVAR, and this is, again, we've talked about uh, quite extensively this morning, that TVAR uh, seems to be the, the role of, of uh, sorry, the therapy of choice in this uh, patient population. So type B dissection for now, we, uh, if they become complicated, uh, uh, is defined as persistent pain or recurrent pain despite best medical therapy. Uh, again, that's uh, following the guidelines by the American Heart Association. Uh, and then, of course, making sure they're maximized on all their medications and is well tolerated. Occasionally, patients don't tolerate the medical, uh, the maximum <coughs> medical therapy. Early expansion is also considered a complicated type B. Anything over four centimeters is considered a uh, rapid expansion. Malperfusion has, has been spoken about. And of course, any sign of, of rupture, there's hemothorax, hemoper hemomyostinum, or there's an increase in size of the periaortic hematoma. So when is surgery uh, considered? Um, again, TVAR is uh, the first line of therapy for these patients. But in general, those who have disease or severe disease of the lower extremities and iliacs where TVAR not, may not be feasible, or there's too much torsiosity of the iliac arteries, again, there are tricks to get around this uh, endovascularly. 
Um, the sharp angulation of the aortic arch can also be a, uh, one an anatomical feature that would not make TVAR feasible. So occasionally, if there's involvement of the arch also by the dissection and you can't get a good landing zone that uh, would uh, maybe push someone towards open surgery. The patients with connective tissue disorders also should be considered for open surgery, although there's growing literature to suggest that maybe those patients can be bridged to uh, open surgery by uh, caring for them initially with an endovascular procedure, getting them through the acute situation, and then an open procedure at a later state. And of course, the last is obviously lack of experience in TVAR at uh, any particular institution, although that is obviously probably a minority now in the United States. And probably the last thing, I guess, if a TVAR is um, offered to the patient and performed, and we do have persistent perfusion of the lower, of the false channel, and, it, and the original reason for the uh, need for intervention is not um, definitively cured, like uh, persistent uh, hemothor uh, hemothorax or such, then maybe those patients should also be considered for open surgery. Just looking at our own institution uh, since 1994, we've done over 1,100 open thoracal abdominal repairs. Uh, looking at our own registry, we've only had uh, 25 patients, again, a very small number of patients, who had open surgery for a complicated type B dissection. The overall mortality of those patients was about 8% and 4% uh, risk of uh, stroke. Uh, looking again at our own institution, uh, this is a work of Dr. Randall Greep. Uh, this is uh, way back in, in the 1990s. Again, the number of patients he, he operated on for a complicated type B dissection was small. Here it's uh, 17 uh, patients uh, with a zero mortality, which is obviously very good. There was no paraplegic patients, and good news, all patients were discharged home. They offered surgery, again, for unremitting pain, uncontrolled hypertension, rupture, aortic dilation, over seven, five, they used five centimeters, and of course, uh, any suggestion of rupture. Looking at the, the Texas experience with open surgery for type B dissection, you can see their algorithm. They started off with 400 patients, and uh, the complicated patients were either uh, treated with surgery or TVAR. They had an overall mortality of about 11% in their group uh, with open surgery and about 13% mortality with TVAR, uh, but overall, uh, the, the, the morbidity of the surgery was higher than that of those who treated with TVAR. And overall, the uh, survivals of patients who had open surgery for a complicated type B were quite good in this particular center, uh, matching that of uh, TVAR and uh, slightly better than those treated with medical therapy. The uh, patients uh, in, a, in the, uh, this was again mentioned before, in the, um, the IRAD registry showed that, that patients who had open surgery had about a 17% uh, mortality uh, and slightly lower with those treated with TVAR. Uh, but overall, uh, it seemed that there was a push towards uh, TVAR uh, as a first line of therapy in these patients. And this was also shown before, but again, looking at the uh, overall uh, way in which we manage patients today throughout the world, it seems that open surgery is becoming less and less. That's the uh, blue bar. Uh, less uh, patients are, uh, are offered uh, this therapy, um, and more TVAR, which is the orange bar. Um, so you can see that the overall uh, push is towards an endovascular uh, um, approach. The uh, surgical morbidity and mortality, I should say the mortality, uh, seems to be roughly in the lower teens. Um, in the last uh, sort of period in which they looked at this, the number was, was very, very slow, the overall number of open surgeries, so the number of deaths uh, was a little bit higher in terms of percentile. So overall, uh, patients who have a uh, complicated type B, if they're managed uh, just conservatively, uh, have a poor